The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Azul Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, the host of the Tiger Technicians Hour and the author of the opening call daily newsletter. We're looking at the Dow of 21 at 27,714. Just missed by, uh, let's see, by five points, four points, uh, making a new all time high. Look, this is going to be very important. You see, I drew the little rectangle in here. That's uh, to say that within this price movement based on some of the techniques that I use based on the chapter wave notation as well as the um, on balance volume in this particular instance because it's the only one that's saying this is a reading that says at these particular levels the blue line that you can see right here on the left is the daily chart of the Dow is suggesting that we're getting into an area where there's a lot of upside resistance about to come up in the um, in the Dow, and that the on-balance volume at this level is very close to some kind of a pullback. That doesn't mean to say that the price has to have a huge move down. It just means that there's a lot of resistance. This all falls away completely if there's a snap right through. And the next thing you know is the Dow is trading at 27,950, about to test the 28,000 level. It's possible because we've got news coming up. I mean, what, another? Oh, right now, there should be some. Isn't it somewhere around now that there's going to be trade talks? Isn't there a speech about to be given? Uh, that's, I think that's what I heard. Um, so that's the Dow. The weekly chart is broken out. I'm, I feel very strongly this is a leg B. Uh, in the Dow weekly chart, and this absolutely is a leg D in the monthly chart. And in the Chapman wave, we're always looking for Ds to say, all right, be careful, because this is where other things can happen. Doesn't have to, but this is where you're on the lookout. You lift your foot off the accelerator, hover over the brake, get ready for some kind of, uh, some kind of stalling motion or reversal. In the S&P, this did make an all-time high. This is now a leg E. Now, there could be other notations. I've got this as a leg E right now from this area at a leg E. You've got to be a little bit careful because this is where you can expect some kind of the opportunity to turn around uh, starts at this particular level. But the MACD is only, look, the histogram is just slightly uh, decreasing. That's the distance between the green line and the red line, faster moving average and the slow moving average. It's called the nine period differential. I'll be having a webinar a week from tonight, uh, 5 o'clock to 6.30 for subscribers. You can become a subscriber. We've had some really nice calls, really nice action in, in stocks that we've picked. Um, uh, I had a question, would I go through some if, if it's okay? That's because obviously I don't want to give brand new things that have just been put out that are doing well because it's not fair on subscribers. Anyway, I'll talk about that. Meantime, this is an all-time high at 331.02.61. And that says this leg C in the weekly chart is extending and leg only leg B in the monthly. That, that's really positive. But it doesn't mean to say you can't have very sharp pullbacks. Look, look at that peak A from 3,027 uh, down to... <clears throat> 2,822. Uh, hey, that's a big move. So within that uh, uh, perspective, I'm saying to subscribers, let's be a little bit cautious, but that hasn't stopped us from having only long positions in stocks, but we have implemented some short positions in indexes. Uh, the QQQ, so the support now for the S&P trading at 3,095. If there's any turn down by Wednesday or Thursday, uh, 3,075, where we were just yesterday, is one support level. But 3,061 is the 14 period exponential moving average. The price would have to go a lot lower to get this green line to go underneath the black line. That's the nine period moving average going under the 14 period moving average. So 
at this point, I'm saying sideways to choppy, probably with lower highs and lower lows, is the way that we would consolidate if that's going to occur. But if there's any sense of uh, uh, optimism based on the, the uh, whatever's discussed today in the trade talks, obviously this market is uh, um, nervous enough to grab, latch onto it and s just zoom to the upside. I'm just doing this as just normal uh, um, exhale, exhale and inhale uh, action in markets that takes place, and we'll see if there's another one of those. Would this be exhale? This would be an exhale. When inhale. This would be an inhale. <laughs> so right now the QQQ is 202.21 all-time high, trading at 201.86, slight, just slightly lower. Magnes goes to is at 92%. That's really good. On balance volume is bumping up against resistance. Um, and it's sort of pulled back a little bit, but it's it's not doing anything like a V-shape, inverted V-shape turnaround. Um, okay, we're looking at the weekly chart. E slash C, I'm pretty sure this is a C. I'm going to put an up arrow right here to say that's the way I'm looking at it. And monthly chart is a leg C, looking very good. So I, I am anticipating a shorter term consolidation uh, within the aspect that the larger trends are still pointing higher. I do, uh, IWM is failing here. It's uh, only up 35 cents at 159.13. The high is 159.88, uh, but we have had 160.46 as a recovery high. I've got this as a leg F. If it goes higher, I'm not sure I'll call that a G. I think I'll probably call that a C and say that it could still make a D. So the day is absolutely young. Anything can happen. News, news is absolutely relevant now. It can impact markets either way. Uh, we've just got to watch this very closely. Gold pulled back a little bit. It's down 4.4 at 40.52. <clears throat> this is uh, breaking the rectangle formation in the weekly chart. That's that dreaded H. It took out the left side low. Not a good sign. This peak C in the monthly says, okay, you might test the 13, uh, sorry, 1433 level. That's the nine period exponential moving average support. And let's see if silver's doing the same thing. Silver is uh, down one point, uh, point, point. One at 16.69. It's also taking out that left side low in the uh, cup in the arch formation. In the let me just draw it in so you know what I'm doing. I'm going to be talking about these patterns and how they work and why they work in my uh, webinar coming up a week from tonight. Go to the front page of uh, TFNN and you'll see it there. That is the uh, for subscribers to my opening call newsletter, and I'll, I'll explain exactly what happens in the lowercase h, what happens if you take out the left side low, um, what you're looking for, how it can save itself, and how it won't save itself. The MACD and stochastic are very weak in silver, so that's saying it's going to have a tough time breaking back into the 17s at this particular point at 16.7. Uh, let's go to the, uh, I'd like to just quickly do high-grade copper. High-grade copper is pulling back off the peak E. Just stuck in a range. I like to look at crude oil. We want, and we'll get to the dollar because I'll do that with the currencies. The dollar is, uh, sorry, crude oil is just, it's close to the 200 period exponential moving average. Not really going anywhere. It's just stuck in a range. Now we'll look at the dollar, DXY. The dollar is actually acting quite nicely here. It did start leg C and it's at 98.30. And we'll talk about the euro and the yen as soon as we get back. Basil Chapman dials up 44. Be right back. Tiger Technicians are on his way, 877-927-6648. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today, and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today.
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, everyone. We're back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians. Our Dow's up uh, 31, S&P's up uh, 8. So this is going to be very important. You see the dollar's had a very nice rally. Yeah, it's a nice rally, but when you think of the 1969-67 all-time high, not, sorry, four or five year high in the uh, in the dollar on the 1st of October down to the low that was made a month exactly a month later on the 1st of September we're not quite 50 percent yet of that move and it's already in C has that I prefer to see C way up here so that when you get D D goes even beyond the high that was made on the 1st of October. Ah, this says to me you might stall. I don't mind stalling at this point, I must say, because I've been expecting a consolidation. The dollar, we've had a buy signal since uh, April of 2018. Uh, it's had 90 was the price. It went to almost 100. Yeah, $10 in a 10 uh, percent is over a little over 10 percent, 11 and a half percent in a currency over a period of time. is that That's really something. Uh, but then we had a big pullback, and that was a weekly month, a weekly sell mode. And that just said to me, be careful. But look at the nine. Look how important I made this nice and thick, especially for instructive uh, and educational um, um, demonstration. You see this black line here? This is the 14-period exponential moving average. I made it thick in all, all time frames. Why? I tell you, it's just so important. The 9-period is very important, and so is the 14. Everybody has their favorite moving averages. Everybody has either simple or exponential or D, or whatever it is. Stick with what you use because you'll find that it gives you the parameters that you're comfortable with. You have great knowledge. You've had experience with them. It doesn't matter. I happen to like this because look at the way this particular moving average, the exponential with the weighting on the last uh, uh, close, look how nicely it's held in all these different time frames. I, I love this one because it's just a nice springboard. And the nine period moving average says if you push away from the 14 above or push below, that nine EMA is like your, this is like your trampoline catch or we can call it, uh, this is your safety margin. And this is the one that says, wow, this is the, this has pushed you 
to the outer bounds of your of your your elastic band limit. And now, if you hold it, you should spring back. And that's kind of what it's done here in the monthly chart. I still like it longer term. I think the dollar is the uh, I call it the Harley Davidson of America uh, in terms of currencies around the world. It is the icon because our economy is just so good that this is the reason why I like the dollar. Um, yes, you can have a consolidation. We've already had one of the longer consolidations in time. Um, not the longest, but one of the long ones. And we'll see what happens after this. I do like it. So let's go to the EUR USD, which is the euro, the euro dollar currency pair. See, that made a PD. Why is D so important? That's where other things can happen. So just underneath the 200 period moving average, it can't twice it tries to get there and fails. So then it gives you this double top, the U-shaped formation. I'll talk about this, called the Chapman Wave drop back pattern, uh, drop bucket pattern. It's like a backhoe. This, the arm lifts up. It's got the bucket and it can't, it can't push higher. Opens up and all the, the gravel and stuff falls out of it, a little bit literal. Um, and here it is. So the euro is pulled back, and this says that weekly chart is back to looking lousy. In the monthly chart, there's another word for it. Um, but let's just say it's more than lousy. And if you look at the USD JPY, which sometimes moves in the same direction, not the same percentage, the same direction as the, as the dollar, has gone to a peak E above the 200 period moving average, but really is struggling at this particular line. It's trading at 109.07 up 0.02. And look, yeah, you are. There's this line in the daily 200 period moving average. It goes, it's like a yo yo, it goes up, goes down. It's just gyrating using this as a fulcrum. So it's up against, it should go slightly higher. It should test the weekly 109.49 level um, and go a little above it, maybe touch 110, and then maybe it can rest. We'll see. But so far, it's doing very nicely. And I have to put an up arrow in. Why? Because it's at 85%, over 85%. Uh, usually, I've gone from a buy signal to a buy mode in the Chapman Wave methodology. All of these things we'll discuss in my uh, in my weekly in my webinar coming up next week, Tuesday the 19th, a week from today. Okay, so we did that, did that, did that. Now let's go to the TLT. The TLT trying to have a little bit of a balance. Wow, it's up to 36 cents at 135.36. And in fact, it's come down from the 148.90 level in August to the 136 level in September, bounces all the way to 146. Now it comes tumbling down to the 134s, 135s. It looks to me, as this dreaded H and this weekly chart um, has already once closed underneath the left side, 136.54 low. This is going to be tough. This says to me, yeah, the bonds um, could go a little lower, yields could go a little higher. Now, um, normally I'd be saying if the market is going to be soft here, if it's going to be pulling back, you should see money come out of the volatility of stocks going to the so-called safety of bonds. So how this 134 level um, is going to uh, be treated in other words, does money come in to push it back into the 137s, get back above the H pattern as the MACD and the weekly stochastic turn up? That's going to be tough to do. It's going to take time. So all I can say is we're going one step at a time. Let's see um, Look, a question I had about the NYA.X. That's the New York Stock Exchange. All-time high, 13,600 in January of 2018. Cascades down to 10,723 in an this is the lightning lightning um, pattern, lightning bolt pattern. A to B equals, uh, and then you rally to C, and then C to D is even bigger in this case than the A to B. But in the Chapman Wave methodology, it went down to trough C at 10 at 10,723, and now it's gone to the high of just four days ago. It's showing right now at 13,395, just under the peak D in the daily. I'm calling this a leg B in the monthly, This in the weekly chart. This is very good in the monthly, is in leg C. So all of the indices say, looking out into 2020, we should make higher highs. And probably in January, uh, based on the monthly charts, January or February, early in 2020, okay? Now, I uh, just wanted to show you this quickly. Well, it doesn't have to be quick. We're in no rush. Do I have any uh, questions here? No, no, nothing yet. That's okay. So in the, in the five-minute uh, 
Chapman Wave methodology of the E-mini uh, chart. This is the E-mini futures. <clears throat> you take your trough that was made at about uh, 8.30 this morning. That's 8.45 at 3,086.25. Runs all the way to a peak E at 3,102.00, all-time high. And then comes down and it goes, it's in leg C to the downside, left side, right side, price time match, took out um, the support. If it takes out 30.92 support, the, this 200-period uh, moving average of 3,090 is going to be next. Now, what's really important about this phase, okay, now I'm going to answer some of the questions. Some of the questions coming in is, um, oh, we've got a break coming up. Oh. All right, I had I had drops in my eye to get the eyes checked this morning. I didn't think it would last this long, being fuzzy, but it is. But thank goodness I'm better than 2020. Um, not that I wear glasses, but uh, not all the time. And uh, but I can't see some of these numbers. So I'll read the emails a little closer up in the break. Basil Chapman, thank you. Conditions hour. Dow's up 20. S and P's up seven. We'll be right back. Basil Chapman has just announced a live 90-minute webinar he'll be conducting for subscribers to his daily trading newsletter, The Opening Call, which will be taking place Tuesday, November 19th from 5 till 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, titled A Comprehensive Review of the Chapman Wave Techniques and Market Outlook Ahead for 2020. This is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial to The Opening Call while gaining access to Basil's live subscriber event taking place later this month. With some stock picks up 15 to 30% this year alone, Basil will review many of the Chapman Wave techniques that helped in their successful analysis, as well as providing the sectors and stocks that he thinks will be of importance heading into 2020. For all the details, check out the opening call on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. Dow's up 24, and we're going to go straight to Scott in Safety Harbor. Hi, Scott. How are you? Ah, Scott, you there? Or maybe you're listening with a little delay there. Um... No, I'm not sure. Okay. Scott wanted to look at M. I also want to look at M because I looked at it a little closer. We discussed it yesterday. Scott, if you're there, just shout out, I'm here. 
But in the meantime, M is Macy's. Macy's had a high just a year ago in the 40s, and it traded just a, a month or so ago in the 14s. Now it's trading at, uh, let's see, 16.22, up 17 cents. What's really important about this is I looked at it, we discussed it yesterday when I was on with Tommy Jr. at 10 o'clock, um, and we were looking and we are talking about the fundamental part of it. I, I took a closer look and I thought, you know what? Macy's will get the very big test coming up over the next two months, going to the end of the year with the shopping, et cetera. And I, the reason why I say that is because, yes, there is a ton of online shopping, just a, an absolute, I mean, that is the medium that's used predominantly. I'm not, even, I, I'm not sure that I can say what percentage, but it, it, is, it is very big. At the same time, Macy's, and I haven't been for a while, if they've kept up their standard and it used to be good, it got a little sloppy, and then uh, the ones near us around here, uh, the one in Chestnut Hill disappeared. It's in Newton, Massachusetts. And the one in Framings, there, there, there are a couple of them. So I, I just haven't been, but the last time I went in, it looked like the quality had improved, but it looked very cluttered because I think it was around about the holiday season. So within that context, I think it's worth looking at Macy's as a longer term. It's either going to be saved by this season because it starts to trade because things are going well and it starts to trade in the 18s to the 19s and holds there and treats that as the new base rather than the 16s and 15s. I can just tell you that if, if Macy's starts to trade in the 13s in this season, going in November, December, I don't know what they're going to do next year. So I just wondered why, why you know, Scott spoke, we spoke about it fundamentally. I looked at it, I said it's in a rectangle formation. So I don't hear, I don't hear Scott at all. Uh, do I get any messages? Do I see? Yes, I do. Um, so I don't know if Scott's there. But I just wanted to mention that it's worth looking at some of these. Now, the JWN is uh, Nordstrom. Nordstrom is a much better, a much better chart formation compared with Macy's. But look, it too was up in the 65, 66 area just uh, six months or so ago, no, a year ago. And then it plunges down to the 25s, and it's trading right now at 37. So it's had a much nicer rally, but even there, and they have a much better, and I, I haven't been there for ages, have much better quality, but they haven't been able to survive. And I think if you look at it and you put it into the category of, is it fair to go to a general retailer like a, a Walmart? I, you know, these are these are apparel companies, uh, these sales. Walmart has everything, but they've done the right thing. Look, they are near the all-time highs. At 119 right now, 120, 21 was the uh, all-time high. Look at Target. Also, it's not fair to really compare because it's a different type of company. Closer to all-time highs than the most recent lows. Oh, no, it's getting, well, yeah, but it, it's, hey, at 109, 109 right now, um, it's close to the 115's all-time high. So, I, there's a difference, and I just wanted to mention it because I did go through them uh, last night. I wanted to just follow up that I just wasn't talking. I, I wanted to be talking apples to apples and apples to oranges, and I think apples to apples is more uh, Nordstrom and Macy's than it is something like a Target or Walmart, who are just there's a general contractors or whatever you call it. They have everything. Okay, so I, I don't hear anything, so maybe he wasn't able to hold on. Um, and meantime, back at the ranch, I do want to look at a couple of things here that I think are quite important. The XLE, I had a question yesterday about the XLE, and my answer was, it was a, a text from the Dan, and my answer was that I don't see anything yet, and that long-term spider um, monthly chart of the XLE shows you how important this, this, what would you say it is? It's about a... I can hold it up now, but I can't get to it, and I can't uh, read it because it'll be too, I, the fine print will be too small. I would say there's about an 8 to 11 percent incline that's going on from the low that was made way back in 2009 at 37.40, 
and this is the XLE, and then it's in this magnificent, look at this, I'll talk about this in my webinar coming up on, on next Tuesday night, uh, about channels and what you do and how you can divide, even the channel can be divided. It doesn't have to be exactly in half, you find the most important middle ground, and then look, this is the middle ground that I'm choosing right now. I'm actually gonna raise it just a little bit because my eye says that it needs to be more there. And that middle ground says that it, it, it's failed all the way from 2016, the rally uh, from 2015-16, uh, all the way to the resistance levels up against this trend line has been just a voracious appetite for selling every time it gets there. And now look, the bounces haven't been able to hold. So it's telling you that the S&P Select Energy Fund, SPIDER ETF, at 60.32, uh, 60 wow, it, it mustn't get back into the 55 area because that's gonna be very poor action. So this is a very mixed market, very selective. And what I've done for subscribers, should I do this? I really don't like to do it. It's just, I'm not, I'm not superstitious, but it does kind of puts you out there. All right, I, I guess I, I was asked about it, I'll do it. So what do we have? We've had different things. We've taken profits, short-term profits and some. Uh, the, late, the, the last two, Cyber is one, Cyber Arc. I've liked that a lot. We got in at 104, then the earnings came out. I, I, I said, just be careful if it pulls back, we had 101 stop. Um, you know, if you're thinking that you don't want to sit through the uh, earnings, you can lighten up a little bit, but we had no choice. We stayed in it. Uh, it ran all the way to 190.99. How it missed 120 round number high by a penny, I don't know, on the 6th of November. The next day, spectacular move in one day. And then it pulled back the next day, much sharper. So we took a little bit off at the open on the day after the spike at 116. Uh, just over 116, very nice gain for a day. Then we took a little bit off because it had a very ugly session the, the day of the 7th. That was that was lousy, it filled the gap. And I thought, oh, filling the gap straight off is not good. So we took just a little bit off and now it's running very nicely. So for new subscribers or maybe or people who didn't get in, what do you do now? Hold tight, I love the fact that CyberArk is an Israeli network security software company had 148.74 high in July of last year, plummets to 94, that's a real plummet, 50%, wow, that's a 48% decline. And now it's rallying, I think it's back in play, but I need more evidence I, to, to, to really pile on here. I don't want to do that just yet. And we've got a position, very nice, we've taken nice profits. I'm just being a little careful. So I just wanted to explain the type of thing we do. Um, we've got a, a stock we bought this morning, almost at the low and it's up two and a half percent from where we bought it. Um, that's nice, it gives us a little cushion, that's the main thing. I'll be right back, Basil Chaplin, Tiger Positions. Down. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you're a trader in the market looking for exposure to gold or gold mining equities, then now is a perfect time to sign up for Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. The summer is over, gold is trading back above $1,500, and the 10-year treasury is hovering at around 1.5%. 
Tom O'Brien has been writing his weekly gold report for almost 18 years. There's no one that knows more about how the gold market trades and how gold mining equities react. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, Tom publishes his weekly gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. As of September 3rd, Gold Report subscribers have five active open positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 38% for each position. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up today by visiting tfnn.com. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. Uh, I had a question about uh, the financials, XLF. XLF is trading right now. Um, it's up a little. It's up four cents at 29.80. So this is a little extended both in technicals and in the MAGD, which is still very strong. Stochastics at 89%, very good. On balance volume sort of flattening out. That weekly chart, I love the breakout. I, I have to call this a new leg B. I don't think this is an E slash B. I think this is new, and that's a leg C in the monthly chart. And the reason why I say that, um, I think that I'm, I, I have no choice but to call it a B in the weekly, is that the MACD is very strong, getting a little toppy here. and says that upside at this point might be a little limited, but it says that the downside has really good support, maybe a point, point and a half from where we are right now. Uh, the stochastics is at 94%. Um, it's going to take a lot more than one and a half points. It'll take more than two and a half points to get that stochastic back down uh, under 78% or under 80%. Maybe a point and a half. Um, so, and then, and the monthly chart is just now. Of course, the month has still got a whole chunk of weeks to go, but uh, we're looking at the MACD just finally turning up, crossing positive. So that's a good sign. And yeah, the question was, what about what about J.P. Morgan? Hey, J.P. Morgan. Uh, this is Jamie Diamond, isn't it? I think so. Uh, Diamond uh, has gone E F G G slash C. Uh, let me just double check. I don't want to say anything out of turn here. Is that it? Oh, let me just see if I can read that. 125, 16, 125, 15. Yep, that was a peak. The peak D, almost a champ wave instant reset. Oh, I've got something to talk about. Um, I'll talk about it in a moment. This says that there could be an instant restart or champ wave unconventional flat base restart. So that's A. B, and then we get G slash C, G slash C. So even there, you might just make a nominal new high D, but then I think that uh, J.P. Morgan is going to take a little bit of a breather, and I see that in many of the others. Now, Goldman Sachs has not done very well. So this is E. <clears throat> this is E in the, month, in the weekly chart. That's different to the others, but it is E, and it's a D slash B in the monthly chart. Everything is really good. The financials have done really well. What happens in the TLT from here is going to be very important for them. Um, so um, what we're looking at in terms of JP Morgan is that it's been a leader. 
Let's look at Goldman Sachs, which has not been a leader. They've had a lot of problems coming up. Look, it's gone to a leg D finally in the monthly chart. But ages ago, I said, if I see Goldman Sachs trading in the 222 to 225 area, I think that'll be <clears throat> a very important breakout. And we haven't got there yet. We did get to, um, <clears throat> sorry, we got there, but we haven't held. We went to 225 three or four days ago calling this an F for now, I want to see a trading there. And if it does that, I think it's telling us about the financial, something very good. Because on the one hand, you've got JP Morgan, which is heavy into um, the whole financial area of the IPOs. It's just the whole technical side of banking. You've got Goldman Sachs, which used to be there, and has had a tremendous lot of problems. And also, it used to be the trader. I mean, they had years where they had just days of negative action. All the rest were positive. <clears throat> Let me just drink a tea. And the other thing is, um, the Bank of America, which we've been long on and off, but we've had a core position since December of 24, is at 33 right now. It's, I still think that that whole area of their Merrill Lynch, which they call Merrill now, I think that's going to be really important. Zero percent fees or what, not, doesn't matter, because they're going to get the bulk of their clients bigger, um, how can I put this, the basket of goods that their, that their clients have is going to be more and more, it'll be leaning towards the Merrill side of it so that they can start when the market really gets going, when we're up in the 28,500s, 29,300s in the Dow, they can start talking to, to their clients like all the others and say, hey, you, you, you're in very conservative. Don't you want to go over to, and then every day you'll see more and more an increase in the investors conservative portfolio going to the speculative side. That's where the money is going to be made. So we'll see. Okay, this is my speculation. Question I had about the IYT. Yes, the IYT is important. It's still not, hasn't broken that major trend line resistance level in the monthly chart. It, I shouldn't say it hasn't broken. It hasn't closed decisively above it. And that's exactly where we are right now in the 197 to 202 area. If we can get to 205, I'll finally say, you know what? The transports are participating. So far, they're active, they better, but they're not doing all that well. And yes, the question came up about the XAL. XAL, I've not updated this. This is a C. This is a D. That's a new A, B, C, and it goes to a D. Instant restart goes to another D. That's a beauty. I'll be teaching this. I can't spend too much time on it, but I will introduce it. And then maybe, maybe even in December, I have a couple of classes on specific techniques. I think that's going to be the biggest. I've been trying to think how I can help subscribers um, best of all. And I think I want to get back to just showing the techniques, how they work, etc. So this has... Um, XAL down a dollar twenty nine today one hundred nine forty five. The Arca airline index uh, trading very nicely over the last uh, few months since the I think that was August low just under ninety and now it's gone to a hundred and uh, said one hundred nine right now having it. What did I say it was one hundred eleven something one hundred twelve point fifteen just uh, four days ago. So okay now I can get to something that I wanted to talk about. I'm um, not getting an answer there. Maybe I misread it. Maybe my eyes are still glossy from the uh, drops that I had when they die late here. And the driving home was not bad today because it was cloudy. If it was sunny, it would have been a little difficult. Uh, dog losses would have been very important. Okay. What we're looking at here is I want you to do a couple of things. And I thought, oh, I won't be able to read it. Can I read it? Let's see if I can. If I can't, I'll have to do it tomorrow. Uh, nope, it's a little bit too fuzzy. I wanted a whole bunch of investors' business daily, at least the top 15, to show you where I think we are and the reason why the, a consolidation right here would be fine. But very specifically, we've got some. I've been trying to find under the radar stocks. They have been working quite nicely. Some have been working very nicely. 
Um, and some I've had, we've had profits and I've been taken out because I've been treating them as trades more than uh, positions. Others I want to hopefully uh, have started a position that's more an intermediate term position. I mean, I like uh, it's just fun to have something that you're holding for months because every time there's a major sell off, you're in a, such a nice low position. You can say, big deal. I, uh, my target is much higher. I have all the time in the world. So let's just deal with that. Now, I want to do a couple of things as we're about to, before we go to the next break. Let me explain what I'm looking at here and why I'm looking at it. And this is the stuff I'm going to be doing um, next week, Tuesday night, in my webinar for subscribers. You can become a subscriber. Hey, it's free because you pay for a month. If you, anything you don't like, you get your money back. I wouldn't say it's free, but it could be free. But you would get the webinar plus all my other webinars that I have there posted, listed, You'll be able to go through that. So as soon as we get back, I'll spend the next remaining just few I'm certain minutes. I'm you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated fulvic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Uh, yes, a couple of things going on. Just quickly, let me show you something here. Remember, I talked about these moving averages. Remember, we had the cell uh, base in the bad news cloud cover. I don't know if we've got another one here. I did draw in the rectangle. We've taken and we've implemented some kind of plan for this. Uh, so I'll talk about it more tomorrow. But I have a question here. Uh, both the question that went to my engineer and one that was sent to me that I just saw on AB, and it's called Alliance. Actually, can't see the title. Alliance something or other. Uh, Alliance something or other. Alliance. Uh, here we go. AB. 
Okay, so meantime, while I'm looking for this actual name of the, uh, I can't get it, of course, it's not working. All right, so AB is the symbol. One of the things I like to look at, what strikes you immediately? Sometimes you can you can go crazy just ana analyzing. Just look at this. It says it's in a trading band, and you're in it, you've been in it for a while. It's at 29.54, AB right now, 29.54. I think you've been in since uh, way, way earlier. I'm looking at this, and I'm suggesting to you that if you're in it, it's holding very nicely. It's in an area that's found support, but every time it gets to a certain level, it, it has resistance. All I'm going to say to you, Alan, is hold this for now. Tomorrow I'll do some work over, uh, tonight, and I'll, I'll do it more tomorrow. You're in it, holding quite nicely right now. At this point, on a very short-term basis, the 28th is really important support. But I think it's a stuck in a range for now. Good session today. Let's talk about it tomorrow. I will do some work on it. I don't want to just, uh, you know, talk off, off, off the top of my head. But look at the patterns. You see this V-shaped pattern? So far, it's acting well. It's making a left side, right side price time match. It has time, but it needs to break above 29.86. It needs to get into the, it has to touch 30. And it has to do it within another, or I would say another three to five sessions without breaking 29.20 support. So far, it's good. Stay with it. We'll do more on it tomorrow. And as we're about to wrap up, don't forget, you've got Steve Rhodes coming up. You've got Dave White. You've got Tom O'Brien. I'll be back with Tom a little later this afternoon. Don't forget my webinar coming up on Tuesday the 19th, 5 o'clock to 6.30 Eastern Time for subscribers. You can become a subscriber. We've had some really nice and low price stocks as well for those of you who don't want to put too much money to work here. And they've been working very nicely. Hope to see you tomorrow. Otherwise, I'll see you with Tom this afternoon. Have a great day.